Since we haven't covered a lot of chemistry yet, our first few experiments this semester deal with physical properties of substances. Last week we did our identification of an unknown liquid experiment where we used physical properties to identify a particular compound. In today's lab we're going to continue our study of physical properties and this time we're going to use them to separate a mixture. We have three substances we'll be looking at today. Um, sal or silica gel, which is basically like finely ground sand. We have a compound called salicylic acid. And we have some salt. And I've ground this salt up into a fine powder so that it will be fairly indistinguishable from these other substances. What we're going to do is study the solubilities of these three compounds and use those solubilities to help us separate them. So in the end of the experiment, you guys will be testing an unknown mixture which could contain two or even all three of these substances. The first part of the lab, we're going to be simply testing the solubility. So we'll be putting samples of each of these three into test tubes and then adding um, alcohol to one sample of each compound and water to the other. What you're going to find is that one of these substances will dissolve in water but not alcohol, one will dissolve in alcohol but not water, and the other will be insoluble in both of those. And we're going to use that approach to separate them. When we, once we've determined the solubilities of each of these things, then we should be able to separate our unknown mixture. What we'll do is we're going to take a mixture of our unknown and in a test tube and first we will add to that some alcohol. Swirl it around and if our alcohol soluble material is present it should dissolve and leave the other two substances behind. To separate the alcohol soluble substance we're going to use a filter paper so we will simply take our filter paper and fold it into quarters, and then we can make sort of a nice little cone that we can use to filter. And this little cone will fit very nicely into our glass funnel. We'll probably wet it a little bit to get it to stay in there. Sometimes it tends to uh, pop up a bit for us. Then what we'll do is we'll pour our initial mixture and the alcohol through the funnel. The alcohol will pass through into a test tube. If our unknown contains the alcohol soluble material, it's going to pass through into the test tube. If our unknown contains either of the two insoluble materials, they will be remaining behind in the filter. We'll then take the alcohol and we'll pour it onto this watch glass and then heat it over hot water and that will cause the alcohol to evaporate. If that compound is present, we will see a white residue left behind. If that substance is not in the unknown, then the plate should remain relatively clean. We can then go ahead and pass some water through the filter, and if there's any of the water-soluble material, it will dissolve, pass into the test tube, and then we'll take a, next, a new watch glass and we will evaporate that to look for a white solid. At the end, after we've passed the water and alcohol through, if there's still a solid left behind, it means we have that third component, which was insoluble in each of the solvents. So that's the basic setup of the lab. Let's head on over and begin testing our various substances. Our first solubility test will be salicylic acid and ethanol. So we'll put a little bit of salicylic acid in this test tube. And we'll add to that some of our alcohol. And now let's go ahead and stir that a little bit just to make sure. And it appears that it is indeed dissolving. So we can conclude then that salicylic acid is soluble in ethanol. Next, let's try our salicylic acid with deionized water. 
So again, we'll put a little sample in the test tube. Now we'll add some water to that. And let's stir it around. Oh, and I see lots of little chunks of salicylic acid. Oh yeah, it's all over in there. So apparently, salicylic acid does not seem to dissolve in water. It's just sort of floating on the surface. Next, we'll try some salt with alcohol. And there's a sample of salt. We'll go ahead and add some alcohol to it. Stir that around. And it looks like all of that salt is just sitting unchanged on the bottom of the test tube. Now let's try some salt with water. So we'll put a little bit of salt in the bottom of our test tube. Add some deionized water to it. And we'll go ahead and stir that around. And I'm sure you're not incredibly surprised that salt dissolves in water. That's probably something you already knew. But now we've confirmed it. And finally, let's test the solubility of our silica gel, i.e. ground up sand. So we'll put some silica gel in our test tube. Add to that some ethanol. And once again, we'll give that a stir. And it's pretty obvious that the silica gel is not dissolving in the alcohol. And last, let's uh, test the solubility of our silica gel in water. We'll go ahead and give that a stir, but I think it's pretty clear that it's not clear. And again, you're probably not terribly surprised that sand doesn't dissolve in water or there wouldn't be a lot of beaches out there. So that wraps up our initial solubility tests. Now we'll use this information to attempt to separate and identify the components in an unknown mixture. Okay, we're going to be testing unknown number one. So the first thing we need to do is to measure out about a one gram sample. We'll go ahead and tear the balance. Make sure our unknown is well mixed. a little bit more. There we go. So there's our unknown sample. Now we need to add to that about five milliliters of ethanol. And then we'll stir that around and see if anything dissolves. And then we'll go ahead and pass that through our filter and see if there's anything in the ethanol. I've been stirring this for a bit, and clearly there is some insoluble material in there, but that doesn't mean that our ethanol-soluble substance isn't in the unknown as well. We'll have to filter off this solution and then evaporate the ethanol to see if any residue is left behind. We're ready now to start filtering off the uh, first ethanol solution. I'm going to squirt a little bit of ethanol in the filter paper here just to get it to stick. That won't really hurt anything, but that will get it to stay in the glass funnel. So let's go ahead and stir this up as best we can. 
and we'll try to pour all of that in there. Now we want to get all of the solid that's still in here rinsed out, so we'll have to use a little bit of extra ethanol, but that's okay. That extra ethanol is not going to hurt anything. All we're interested in is making sure we get everything out of here, or at least as much of it as we can. Maybe one more little rinse here. There, we've got most of, every, most of it out of there. So now we just have to wait for the ethanol to pass through the filter, and then we'll transfer that ethanol onto our watch glass and let it evaporate. So while we let that continue to filter, let's go ahead and light our Bunsen burner, and we'll start heating up our water because we're going to need that steam from the hot water to evaporate the ethanol. So we'll take a break here for a moment while it finishes filtering. All right, it's been just about done filtering here. I've actually added a couple milliliters of additional ethanol to rinse it out. So let's go ahead and remove this test tube. Now there's still a little bit of ethanol dripping through, and that's okay. As long as we have enough sample to test, that's all that's really important. But we'll just put a clean test tube here to collect any remaining ethanol that happens to pass through. So we want to get that all out of there before we add our water. And now we're ready to try evaporating the ethanol. I'm going to move the Bunsen burner. I'll go ahead and turn that off. Because ethanol is flammable, we don't want to risk having a fire here. And everything's very hot now. So let's pour a little bit of our ethanol solution onto the watch glass. And it should start evaporating. There we go. So we'll let that evaporate for a few minutes here and see if we end up with a residue. And if we do, that of course means that we have the alcohol soluble substance in our unknown. And actually I can already see some solid forming. So let's pause a moment and we'll get a more close up view. If you look carefully now, you'll see that there's a ring of white solid forming as the uh, ethanol slowly evaporates away. It's leaving a lot of white residue behind, so it looks like we definitely have the ethanol soluble component in our unknown. We'll give that a few more minutes and it should finish evaporating. While that happens, I'm going to go ahead now and start adding water to our remaining residue to see if we have any of the water-soluble component. You can see now the evaporation is going very quickly. It shouldn't be very long until all of the ethanol is evaporated and we have nothing but our residue. There we go. So clearly we have our ethanol soluble component. Let's go ahead now and see if we have any of the water soluble substance. Let's go ahead now and start passing some water through the residue and we'll see if there's any of the water soluble component present.
We don't necessarily have to get all of it, but we do want to remove most of it so that if there is an insoluble material left at the end, there'll be no question about that. So we'll let that filter for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back. It looks like our first five milliliters of water has passed through the filter. So that should be enough for us to at least test. And then we'll go ahead and pass another five milliliters through just to make sure we get any water soluble material removed. So we'll put a fresh test tube in here and do a second rinse. While we do our rinsing, we'll go ahead and evaporate the water to see if there's any of the water-soluble residue. And we'll go ahead and run one more aliquot of water here. There we go. All right, now we'll just have to wait a few minutes for the water on the watch glass to evaporate and the rest of the water to pass through the filter. We're starting to see a bit of residue forming as the water evaporates. So while we do that, Let's take a look at the filter and see if there's anything left on the filter that was insoluble in both the water and the alcohol. So we'll open that filter up. It's a little hard to see on the white, but oh, if you look at that, we've got a whole lot of material here that was insoluble in both the water and the alcohol. So all we have to do now is see what happens with our water evaporation. And it looks like it's coming along pretty well here. You can probably see that residue beginning to form there. Let's take a moment, we'll move up closer so you can get a better look. You can see now that there's quite a bit of white residue appearing as the water evaporates. So it probably shouldn't be more than another couple of minutes and that should be completely evaporated. It takes a little bit longer with water because water has a higher boiling point than ethanol. And there we go. It looks like we've finished evaporating all of the water. Got quite a lot of white residue there. So let's take a look at these three side by side. So our first watch glass is the substance we extracted with ethanol and then evaporated. Our second watch glass is the water extraction and evaporation. And the third watch glass is the residue that was left in the filter after we extracted with both ethanol and water. And that should give you all of the information you need to complete the lab and answer the questions.